Hello everyone. Welcome to the Ozark Outpost in Dixon, Missouri. This is the Commonwealth, January 1943. The British started with, I believe it was 29 pounds in their bank. They have spent 12 on a strategic bomber, 12 on four infantry, and four on an artillery. That's 12, 12, 24, 28, and they saved one. India has spent three to start a minor shipyard for Calcutta. Another three to start a minor shipyard for Bombay. Another three to start an airfield for uh, Saigon that they captured last turn. And then they are spending eight on an air transport. Until they can get to building some ships they have decided that uh, the the only really the only real way they can move reinforcements around down in the money islands that they're trying to liberate is by air. Anzac purchased two marines for eight. Let's see, excuse me, I gotta go back to India. Uh, India saved fourteen. Anzac spent eight on two Marines. That was all of their money. Canada has spent three on an infantry and saved seven. Okay, the Brits have their lone tech chip there that they are going to try to use to finish improved factories. Get down here. And they're looking for a seven. Missed it with a five. Yeah. They're just, they, they've not had any luck at all with their tech rolls. Okay. Combat moves. Let's see if we can see what's going on here. They're going to have another go at Normandy. <coughs> Normandy, you see, is defended by two medium panzers with a commander in support. Here at London, there is a strategic bomber and three fighters. They are going to come over here and try to carpet bomb the Germans in Normandy. The three fighters are going in escort. Then these two transports are going to move. Let's see, what have we got there in London? We've got two infantry and artillery. Uh, they're gonna take one of these tanks from the Midlands and uh, their commander he is going along to support the attack. I've mentioned this before, uh, the commander does not take up any space on the uh, transports. Oh, and uh, Canada, can you see Canada over there? No, you can't, I'm in too close. Let's zoom out a bit. Canada is going to take their infantry. Wait, can they do that? Hmm. Can they do that? Well, you got this C zone here. No, they probably can't do that because I remember reading in the rules somewhere 
that the St. Lawrence Seaway and the Great Lakes are treated as a sea zone for movement purposes. And Ottawa's far enough back up the river there that uh, it's going to have to be called part of the St. Lawrence Seaway. So, no. Never mind. That guy's got to go from Ottawa out here to the Maritimes before he can get on a transport and go across. So, scratch that. No Canadian support this time. Okay, so that's the action there. Down here in the mid, we're going to have a couple of things. Let's see. Well, first off, this second commando brigade is going to do a special operations raid on this minor factory in Tripolitania. Now, the way this works, I did one of these before, and uh, I had the movement rules wrong. I sent an email to Doug at Historical Board Gaming asking for a clarification on an unclear rule. And uh, Doug forwarded my email to the man who uh, wrote the Special Operations Expansion. He's also one of the uh, game developers. His name is uh, Delaja. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, Delaja and I emailed back and forth a little bit. And uh, I finally got this squared away. So this is what the commandos are doing. From Eastern Egypt, they can kayak. I'm getting this straight in my head, so I say this right. They can kayak from an undamaged naval facility. I think you can see it there. There is a, a major port there in Eastern Egypt. By using the kayaks unsupported by anything else, they can go from the major naval facility where they started to any land zone that connects with the sea zone they've started from. I found the easiest way to think about this is the kayaks are like a virtual naval transport being used to bridge them from eastern Egypt to Tripolitania. It's, it's the same sea zone that connects the, the two land zones. <clears throat> so they're going to get over here and raid this minor factory. Uh, well, I'll, I'll explain the rest of that whenever I, I get to that point, but they, they don't require a transport to be able to do this. The kayaks are a, a virtual mode of transportation available only to special operations raiders. So that's how they're getting over there. And then this Anzac Motorized Infantry, this uh, British Infantry, Indian Infantry, the uh, SAS Long Desert, Long Range Desert Group, this fighter and a fighter and tactical bomber from the escort carriers with this squadron are attacking into western Egypt. <clears throat> the, uh, the Canadian uh, Queen's Own Rifles and Patricias are going to stay behind to uh, garrison eastern Egypt. I have this target marker here, or range marker here, to uh, remind me that after their attack, the uh, 
the fighter and the tactical bomber still have a range of three. And the reason that's important is because the, the fleet here, minus a damaged battleship, is going one, two over to here to attack the two Italian destroyers and two Italian uh, transports here off of Rome. The, the battleship is still over here for right now. Here, I'll just put him out there. Oh, hit the camera. I'll just put him out there because he's going over to Gibraltar in non-combat for uh, repairs. Okay, there we go. All right. And uh, the British are going to make their sea attack over here with... Uh, Two heavy cruisers, no, two battle cruisers, a heavy cruiser, and a commander. And the uh, the two, uh, well, let's see, can they? Yeah, the two as the two empty escort carriers are going along with them. I think if I've read that advanced carrier rules thing correctly. As long as they're not empty at the end of the turn, everything's okay. There's no violation of the rule. If they are empty at the end of the turn, then they got to head for home to uh, pick up more planes before they can continue on with their business. All right, now down here in the South Pacific... India and Anzac are going to get in here and do some stuff. I can't get them both in one shot close enough to see all of it, so this is what we'll do. This little squadron right here for India is uh, got two transports, a battleship, a heavy cruiser, a destroyer, and an escort carrier with a fighter. They're picking up Well, for right now, they're going to pick up all these land units, the uh, the Gurkha, the Marine, and the Light Tank. And they're coming down here to attack uh, Java. Yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, I think that'll do it for now. And then over here, Anzac is going to load this Marine and this artillery on their transport. And this whole squadron is going to come up here and try to invade uh, Dutch New Guinea. This tactical bomber will go one, two, three to participate in the attack, and then he will combat move to New Guinea to land with his uh, fourth movement. Okay, that's, well, let's see. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So, since I'm pointed that direction, I'll just start with the action uh, down there in Anzac. Uh, they've got two amphibious units. Let's see. They're limited to the number of bombardment shots that equals their amphibious movement. But is that a first turn limit? Since that artillery has to wait till the second wave to go ashore. Hmm. Alright, I will try to look here as fast as I can. Find the section on amphibious assaults and shore bombardment. Here we go.
Okay, it just says equal to the number of amphibious in the assaulting land units. It does not say anything about uh, first turn or anything, so they'll have uh, two bombardment shots. Uh, one from the battle cruiser and one from the light cruiser. Okay, uh, the bombarding ships and uh, the marine missed. The tactical bomber had to do the job. He rolled a six and the defending Japanese infantry missed with an eight. So, Anzac goes up one, Japan down one. Now, we'll come over here and do uh, Java. Let's see, they've got one, two, three invaders. So they've got, well, they can have a shore bombardment uh, with the battleship and the heavy cruiser. Destroyers don't get shore bombardment. And then there'll be a fighter from the escort carrier uh, supporting the attack as well. All right, the uh, battleship did it with his uh, shore bombardment shot, so it was an unopposed landing. Uh, India's going up to and Japan down to. Okay, that's no, that's not it. This can you see it? No, not quite. I gotta turn a little bit. Now you can see it. This Anzac submarine right here. He's going to go one, two, three, over to here to raid this Japanese convoy line, the uh, Tokyo line. So I'll just do this real quick. Anzac rolled a five, plus two for a submarine makes seven. The Japanese rolled five, no modifier. So there are two damage on this convoy line. And I'm going to have to break a fiver in their stack, so I'll take Japan's money away at the end of the turn when I get done here. Oh, wait a minute. i got to move this task force down to the Java Sea. Okay, now that's correct. All right, now we'll turn over here to the mid. And I'm going to do the raid on the factory first. Uh, the militia that you see in Triple Otania here uh, cannot defend against this. There are garrison militia available, but uh, the Italians weren't expecting anything like this, so they were preparing to defend against a possible land attack. Uh, regular militia defend against land attacks. Garrison militia defend against raiders. You can convert regular militia to garrison militia and back and forth as much as you want, but one can't do the other's job. So, the way we... Uh 
do this here is kind of like strategic bombing. Uh, the Brits roll a d6. They rolled a 2. They get a plus 2 modifier for the Special Forces Raider. That makes that a 4. The Italians get to roll in response with no modifier because they don't have any garrison militia there. They rolled a 2. So, this minor factory is now out of action with two points of damage on it. Uh, minor and medium factories with any damage at all cannot produce units. And uh, it didn't happen this time, but one thing unique to the, uh, the Raiders is that if, if they hit a, fa uh, a facility or a, a factory for more than its maximum damage, then it is destroyed. Rather than just maxing the damage out uh, the way it does with strategic bombing. Okay, so next we will do the fight there in Western Egypt. Now again, that's going to be uh, a tank, a motorized infantry, two regular infantry, the uh, SAS Long Range Desert Group, the fighter from Eastern Egypt, and a fighter and a tactical bomber from the uh, naval fleet. The Italians are defending with three motorized infantry, two regular infantry, an artillery, a tank, and a commander. Uh, we'll see how this goes, because the, the British infantry and the, the tank and everybody are going to take minus one for desert terrain, but we'll see what happens. All right, they did it. It was kind of close. Uh, the ground units, of course, with their, their minus one desert penalty, uh, the, nobody scored a hit except the, uh, the medium tank in the last round. All the hits were done by the uh, fighters and tactical bomber. Uh, it cost the British the uh, two infantry and uh, the motorized infantry. The, the medium tank and the uh, SAS survived. So the fighter from Eastern Egypt, non-combat, moved back to there. The fighter and tactical bomber from the fleet are going one, two, three, back up to their escort carriers in non-combat movement. It's the first time I remembered to use one of my range markers. I've had them in there the whole time and just kept forgetting to use them. Okay, now... We will come over here and do this naval battle that you can barely see for all the stuff in the way. That's uh, two destroy Italian destroyers defending against two battle cruisers and a heavy cruiser with commander support. So they'll be plus one. I'll let you know. Well, they killed the Italian destroyers, but it cost them a heavy cruiser in return. So that, uh, yeah. But they did what they wanted. They, they got rid of those two transports, so they can't run any more reinforcements down to North Africa. Oh, I forgot to mention over here, uh, I went ahead and did it, even though it's not combat. The, uh, the Italian commander made his escape roll to get back over here to Serenica. Okay, now we're over here to Normandy. The uh, strategic bomber 
with three fighters in escort, are going in for carpet bombing. Forgot to mention, uh, the Germans are sending their two jet fighters from Paris to intercept the bombing mission. Okay, interception cost the uh, British one fighter, and then the uh, two German jet fighters were shot down in return. So now the bomber's going in. The carpet bombing got one hit, so the, the Germans lost to Panzer. Now the amphibs are going in with two infantry and artillery. Nope. Two infantry and artillery and a tank, but these two coastal defense ships right here get to shore bombard first. Okay, the shore bombard missed. Now the amphibs are going in. Well, one of the infantry got his hit, but uh, the Panzer defended with a hit and double casualties on the first round, so both of the infantry were killed, and the uh, artillery and tank had to go back to England. So, uh, no result there. All right, now... Make sure that's it for combat. Yes, that's it for combat. So, we'll do uh, non-combat non moves as long as we're right here. Of course, the uh, two surviving fighters and the strate strategic bomber flew back to London. Okay. We are going to shuffle some forces here in non-combat. Uh, earlier, I had this Canadian transport and destroyer over here in the channel, but that wasn't correct. They didn't have enough moves to get there, but they did, in the uh, turn where the Canadian Marine came over, they did land on this point of uh, Brittany, I think that is, that juts out into this sea zone. So, they have a friendly major port right here. They're gonna go one, two, three back home. And this coastal sub has declined to engage with the destroyer. So, these ships are right here. I suppose I could have just left that one over there. This... No, that transport's not going anywhere because he has no guy on it. The infantry goes from Ottawa out here to the Canadian Maritimes. So he's in position for next turn. And you see here, I think you can see, yeah. I took this Corvette off of escort duty so that it can be used to uh, shuttle back and forth with uh, transports. All right. Uh, that's it for non-combat there. Come back down here to the mid. The damaged destroyer goes over here to Gibraltar. This major shipyard at Gibraltar straddles the line so that it's, it's able to service both sea zones. Um, That's it for non-combat there. Yeah. So now we go down here. And right after I repositioned everybody a turn or two ago, now we got a Japanese submarine heading into the Indian Ocean. So we're going to have to reconfigure for that. So... This tactical bomber is going from Ceylon. One, two, three, four. 
back over here to Aiden. This tactical bomber is going. There is an air base on Sumatra. He's going one, two, three, four, because that connects there. Back over here to uh, to Bombay, so he'll be in position. And this medium bomber is going to have to go one, two, three over here to Ceylon, so he'll be in position. And then just because we know he might be sneaky, this medium bomber will go one, two, three to there so he can get in position and that'll be that. Pause for a drink for a second, excuse me. All right, down here in the South Pacific, I don't think Anzac will have any non-combat. Uh, hmm. Yeah, actually, I think they will. It's a small one. This submarine's going to move over here to cruise around off the Gilbert Islands. Okay, that'll do it for non-combat. Place units. Anzac. It's two Marines. Down here at Sydney. General Diego is telling me something. Not exactly sure why he was a little garbled. Okay, India gets its air transport here at Calcutta. The British are getting, uh, well, they're going to go on the British card. They're getting, see what have we got there? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, they're going to get a strategic bomber and uh, four infantry at London. And then that makes the five for there. And then the artillery, artillery will be built at the Midlands. And in Canada, can you see all the way over there? Yep. Canada gets an infantry built here at Ottawa. All right. That will be that. Let's collect some money. Okay, we can see everybody there. Great Britain has 21 and three for Suez, three for neutral Iran. No, three for Suez and two for neutral Iran. That's that. So 21 and 5 is 26, plus the one they saved will make 27 next time. India 
gets its two for Aiden in Eastern Egypt. So they're on 19, plus the 14 they saved is 33, plus two will give them 35. I said in uh, the last turn, I think, India's making more money than it can spend. They, they really need to finish that improved factories. Uh, Anzac, you see there, is on eight. And they get their two for no enemy warships within two Z sea zones of Australia, so that'll give them ten. Canada is still on its five. Plus the seven they saved will be 12. And then they get their plus two bonus. We'll give them 14. This is Ozark Outpost. Over and out.